In a tense moment in the forest, a mother bear's cub was stranded, and despite her best efforts, she couldn't save it. Just as hope seemed lost, an unexpected hero arrived to help. Before we embark on this captivating journey, we kindly invite you to show your support by engaging with our content. Please consider giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel, and leaving a thoughtful comment stating, I've subscribed. Additionally, if you find this story as inspiring as we do, don't forget to share it with your loved ones. Your support means the world to us. Pre-dawn mist clung to the pines as the all-season pros, a team of seasoned climbers led by Elliot, threaded through the virgin mountain forest. Their sights were set on the highest peaks, but fate had a different ascent planned. A deafening roar shattered the stillness, echoing through the valley like a primal scream. This wasn't a territorial bark, but a desperate plea. The climbers froze, hearts pounding in unison. They knew help was needed. Elliot wasted no time. With a flick of his hand, he directed the team towards the source of the sound. Years of experience propelled them through the dense undergrowth, their movements honed to precision. The roar originated from Widow's Peak, infamous for its treacherous cliffs and chilling local legends. As they neared the precipice, the scene unfolded. A distraught bear paced a narrow ledge, the source of the heart-wrenching cries. Below, a small cub clung precariously, whimpering as it attempted to scramble upwards. The mother clawed desperately at the rock face, her paws inches from her baby, but just out of reach. With every frustrated lunge, the cub tumbled back, whimpering in pain. A knot of confusion tightened in Elliot's gut. Bears rarely use this treacherous slope. Why the sudden dangerous ascent? Questions lingered, but time was a luxury they didn't have. One misstep for the cub meant a fatal fall. The mother, fueled by panic, slammed her body against the ledge, sending a cascade of loose snow tumbling down. The precarious slope threatened to turn into an avalanche, burying the cub and any potential rescuer. The path was a jagged nightmare, impossible without proper equipment and time hours for setting anchors and securing ropes, all under the watchful eye of a frantic mother. Being caught between a mother bear and her cub was a risk they weren't willing to take. Time was of the essence, but a reckless approach was a death sentence. With a shaky hand, Elliot pulled out his phone and dialed Mountain Rescue. Every second counted, a distant thrumming filled the air, growing louder with each passing moment. The helicopter, the mother bear, confused and scared, paced the ledge. The climbers watched, hope battling dread as the chopper whirred into position, its blades whipping a frenzy of leaves around the cliff face. The rescue was a heart and throat affair. A rescuer dangled precariously from the chopper, carefully scooping the cub into a secure net. A silent thumbs up, and the winch strained as man and cub rose skyward. The mother bear roared in fury, watching her cub snatched away by the metal bird. Pacing the ledge, she dislodged more snow, triggering a mini avalanche that thankfully missed the distant climbers. On board the chopper, the team assessed the cub. Battered and bleeding from its rocky descent, it whimpered in pain. A rescuer tended to the wounds, applying ointment to prevent infection. Back at the ledge, the rescuer descended again, cradling the cub. The mother reared, stretching her arms high in a primal plea. In a surreal moment, man and bear met, the cub returning to its mother's warm embrace. Relief washed over the climbers as they witnessed the reunion. A gentle nuzzle replaced the bear's ferocious roars, her guttural growls transforming into soft murmurs. But their celebration was short-lived. With a sharp eye, Maya spotted a troubling detail, poacher markings on a nearby tree. A horrifying realization dawned. The desperate climb, the treacherous slope, the mother bear had been fleeing poachers. This path, a suicidal climb for most, was her last refuge. The helicopter may have saved the cub, but it had inadvertently exposed their location. The poachers were now aware of the mother bear's den. The wildlife they just saved was now under renewed threat. Their mountain climb had become a fight for survival. Enraged, the climbers pushed deeper into the forest, searching for any sign of poacher activity. Led by Elliot, they followed a newly discovered trail, 
a path fraught with danger, both natural and human-made. The forest closed in, sunlight filtering through a dense canopy, casting long shadows that played tricks on their eyes. A sudden rustle in the undergrowth sent chills down their spines, hands instinctively reaching for non-existent weapons. But it was only a flash of red fur, a curious fox disappearing into the bushes. They emerged into a clearing, the sight before them chilling them to the bone. Signs of poachers were everywhere, a smoldering fire, scattered supplies, and a map marking designated zones. This wasn't a random group of hunters. This was a well-organized poaching ring, and they were coming back. The urgency crackled in the air. To shield the forest creatures, they had to act fast. Maya's idea, a hidden observation post. Using nature's camouflage, they hunkered down for a tense stakeout. Silence, broken only by birdsong and rustling leaves, stretched their patience thin. As twilight lengthened shadows, movement flickered at the edge of their vision. Poachers. From their leafy den, Elliot and Maya watched, a knot of unease tightening in their stomachs with every poacher's move. This wasn't just a game. These were ruthless threats to the wildlife. Elliot, with a sliver of reception, managed to call to the wildlife authorities. The wait was agonizing. Every minute stretched into an eternity, the poachers a constant, menacing presence. Fear and determination warred within them. Then the tension shattered. The screech of approaching vehicles cut through the stillness. Wildlife rangers, armed and ready, swarmed the poacher camp. The takedown was swift, the poachers apprehended before they could react. Relief washed over them as the rangers secured the area. They'd stopped the poachers, but the ordeal had left its mark. Exhausted, both physically and emotionally, they debriefed with the rangers, but their mission wasn't over. Now aware of the forest's dark underbelly, Elliot decided they couldn't leave. Helping the rangers set up long-term protection measures became their new focus. Exhaustion finally claimed Cole and Gabriel, who crashed into their tents as night painted the sky with stars. Maya, the eternal photographer, lingered, adjusting her camera for the sunrise, a legendary sight in these parts. Lost in the viewfinder, she initially missed the flicker of light and the unnatural hum that pierced the forest symphony. Unease prickled her skin. Following her instincts, she tiptoed away, heart hammering. As her eyes adjusted, a scene ripped from a bad movie unfolded. Armed figures, clad in mismatched military garb, moved with practiced silence. They were headed straight for the camp. Panic surged. Maya raced back to wake Cole, but he slept soundly. Time was a luxury they didn't have. She sprinted to Elliot's tent, a frantic touch his only wake-up call. One look at Maya's terror-stricken face told Elliot everything. They vanished into the shadows as the campsite erupted in harsh flashlight beams. Hidden, they watched as the group, led by a tough-looking man named Blackball, stormed the camp. He barked questions about the missing group, accusing them of interfering with his operations. With a cold command, Blackball's men bound Cole and Gabriel. The camp descended into chaos. Tents and gear went up in flames, a brutal act of revenge. From the darkness, Elliot and Maya watched, a new nightmare unfolding. What began as a fight against poachers had morphed into a hostage crisis. They couldn't stay hidden. They had to act. Blackball's men herded a dazed Cole and Gabriel away from the burning wreckage of their camp. Following at a safe distance, Elliot and Maya weaved through the undergrowth, their hearts pounding a frantic rhythm. Hours bled into night as they tailed the kidnappers. The trek led them to a site neither expected, a sprawling, hidden settlement deep within the forest. It was a chilling sign of the poacher's extensive operation. As their captives were ushered into a fortified compound, Maya, fueled by a surge of defiance, managed to capture grainy photos and videos on her phone. They watched in horror as Cole and Gabriel were locked in a makeshift cage. Witnessing their friends treated like animals ignited a fire in Elliot and Maya's bellies. They were out of gear, battered, but their resolve to save their friends remained. Suddenly, a spine-tingling roar shattered the night. 
Turning, they saw a familiar sight. The mother bear and her cub emerged from the shadows. Fear momentarily gripped them, her presence a looming threat in the darkness. But then, just as abruptly, the bear pivoted and retreated with her cub. Relief washed over them, a short-lived truce with nature. Their hope reignited moments later, when the mother bear reappeared, not alone. Two other bears, formidable and fierce, flanked her. But they weren't heading towards Elliot and Maya's hiding spot. They were charging towards the poacher's camp. The ensuing chaos was a maelstrom of overturned supplies and panicked shouts. Seizing the opportunity, Elliot and Maya bolted towards the cage. In the heart of the pandemonium, they found a shard of metal and pried open the lock. Cole and Gabriel, bewildered but overjoyed, scrambled out. As they fled the camp, a heart-wrenching scene unfolded. One of the bears was subdued by the poachers, but the mother bear and the remaining adult fought their way back into the forest, their roars echoing through the trees. Fueled by adrenaline and the desperate need to escape, the group sprinted through the night, the forest a blur of dark shapes and crashing sounds. They finally stumbled out of the woods, collapsing onto the ground at the ranger's outpost, gasping for breath. Their frantic explanation of the poacher's settlement and the bear's inter-